Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video. Today, we have a pretty serious topic to discuss. We're going to be talking about a global debt crisis, and we're going to be talking about the Great Reset. And I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on all of this, what brings it about, uh, and how we end up with a kind of um, one world currency um, and everything in between. Um, is perhaps what the yield curve predicting this Great Reset? Potentially, um, in my opinion, the Great Reset happens with the failing of the bond market. For those of you that don't know how a fiat system works, a fiat system is basically a debt-based system. You have the fiat that is essentially borrowed into existence, and that's the asset. And there's a liability behind that, which is, in most cases, bonds in the form of treasuries, government bonds, um, and other such things. And Right now, most of the Western world has a higher debt to GDP ratio. So they are basically, um, they have more debt than they do income to sustain um, or to pay off that debt. Um, and this is unsustainable. In my opinion, in our lifetime, it could be a year down the line, two years down the line, perhaps what the yield curve is predicting. We have the steepest yield curve inversion that we've had for 40 plus years. The bond market has been in a 40 plus year um, bull market that may have ended with the events of COVID. Um, it could happen in that kind of a time period or it could happen five, 10 years down the line. One thing that I am certain of, though, is that it will happen. Um, and actually, maybe this is all somewhat planned. Now, that is speculation. However, I do think this is an inevitability. And what we're going to do in this video is look at the global reset, why I believe it has everything to do with the bond market and bonds failing, and why actually bonds are the perfectly positioned thing to ignite a global world currency and a global reset onto a new system. Now, we are a crypto specific channel. And actually, um, We've always said it's almost divine intervention that Bitcoin came about in 2008. And I would like to think that it came about for um, positive reasons and that there's no alternative motive behind it. I think the story of Satoshi Nakamoto is a great one. Um, I think there's many benefits to the founder of Bitcoin being anonymous. But one of the real downsides is we don't know who it was or who they were and what was potentially um behind it and the divine intervention part really comes in with the fact that in 2008 it was quite apparent that the game the debt-based game that we've been propagating and the financial systems um were really in trouble uh, and actually bitcoin was born out of that um and since then has done exceptionally to the point now where we have the likes of blackrock championing it we are going to be talking about BlackRock because we seem to see a real shift away from this 60-40 portfolio split from institutions, which has typically um, meant that they've held 60% equities and 40% bonds, which have just basically gone up for 40 years. What happens to a world where everybody, pensions, institutions, banks, are levied up to the hills with bonds when those bonds just don't do what they've done um, and not only have a higher interest rate on them, but actually go down in price. And this is how we've ended up with things like Silicon Valley Bank, a bit of an extreme example, um, and other such um, things that we've seen happening thus far. Now, in terms of money, you've had more banks and more more money lost than uh, at, at points of 2008 and nine. However, I've argued that actually it's not as severe what's happening right now. That, in my opinion, is still to come um, because if you look at the scope of money that there was in 2008 compared to now, I'd argue that money's worth a lot, lot less and that the, the value of it um, is, it, it isn't as significant as it was back then, but it's still very significant. So let's get into it all, guys. Why am I making this video? Well, I'm here to tell you, and uh, of course, this is not financial advice, but really warn people that they should have money outside of the system. What system am I talking about? I'm talking about a fiat debt-based system. So I'm not sure if a mortgage perhaps counts as this. You know, if you have a, a collapsing of debt, well, I don't know how your mortgage is going to be affected by that. But what I'm talking about is things that exist and have value outside of the system. So for example, gold, silver, I would put Bitcoin in that category. Um, real assets that have a value outside of the system. And one thing that people say to me, and I'm absolutely aware of this, that if the bond market crashes, everything will crash. Stocks, 
likely Bitcoin and likely everything. But it's what comes out of those ashes. And they're going to have something in place for that, by the way. And this is the concept of the Great Reset. We're going to be referring to the Economist's 1988 um, piece. It's what comes out of what, what what does that phoenix look like? You won't just have their system. You'll have things that will actually have value because in my opinion, value is what people deem it to be. And there are um, food, for example, is valuable because we we, we we live off it. We need it to survive. Um, but then you have value people think and, and deem gold valuable. They deem and it's been valued for, for, for thousands of, uh, of years. Um, people deem Bitcoin valuable right now. And, and will they deem a system of accounting, a system of e-commerce um valuable in a time period where the alternative and the us dollar has collapsed and if this is the thing that you know if we look at venezuela for example as a, as a kind of extreme example venezuela is a good example of why socialism doesn't work by the way but anyway don't want to go down that path um <laughs> you know i'm sure there was a time when people wouldn't envision that their money um they'd have needed a wheelbarrow to take to go and buy a loaf of bread. What is the price of Bitcoin in that scenario? You know, I really do think Bitcoin is a revolution. It's answered a lot of, uh, certainly from a technological point of view, blockchain is that engine. And now you have other cryptos that are like, you know, your car, your other car companies that have modified the engine and are trying to do different things and, and stuff like that. Um, but, but, but essentially, you know, what is the value of something like Bitcoin? And what is the value of these other things? And, and do they then become... Um, there's going to be a massive transfer of wealth with with what's going to go down. So I want to start things off. We've got some interesting tweets. We've got one about Henry Kissinger and his recent travel to China. Um, we're going to be talking about debt to GDP. They estimate that debt's at $300 trillion, uh, implying a 349% leverage on a gross domestic product. We're going to read that a little bit into that. And then we've got lots of graphs and charts to look at. I believe this is what's going to cause the great reset, ladies and gentlemen. I possibly have a suspicion that the yield curve inversion that we see, which is extremely steep, we, we didn't as crypto people look into these kind of things until we had to. Um, certainly myself, I speak for myself here, you know, I've to start taking this kind of, everyone's become a macro economist, which I find very cringy, but we, we've all had to sort of pay attention to everything. Um, and I speak to far wiser and, 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 and better people than myself on these subjects. but. Um, I believe potentially maybe the yield curve could be predicting that. I think you've got a number of things adding up. Steepest yield curve in 40 plus years. Potential a capitulation event that has seen the bond market or this kind of, you often end a trend on volatility and high volatility. Um, you maybe have an end to this kind of bond market. I think there's a lot of questions that we're going to try and answer and ask in this video. So bear with me, guys. I am going to be making a documentary on this. Um, it's going to take me a while. I haven't really got any technical skills from a sort of editing point of view. Our videos are me in front of a camera and we give you the information that we think people need and we and we can look at the charts and stuff like that. So I'll have to spend a bit of time getting the editing and stuff down and, 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 and so on and so forth. But I, I really do think that, you know, um, I have a platform that I want to use to um, educate and help. And some of you don't far more educate uh, educated than myself. Um, and please let me know in the comment section if anything you, you disagree with in this video. Um, help help people in, in what I think potentially is to come. Um, and I think this is inevitable. I think this has been brewing for a long time. This is The Economist. This is the um, January 1988 cover of The Economist magazine. And actually our good friend Francis Hunt over at The Reset Sniper, he has had this and been talking about a global reset, um, which actually now banks are, are championing that term. Uh, the World Economic Forum are championing that term um, for a long, long time. Francis is somebody that's well worth a follow, a genuine good guy in um, the sides that I think there are in, in this game. Um, the Economist, so can Britain keep booming? Uh, this talks about a number of things. Get ready for a world currency. And you can see here, let's maybe zoom in on it, perhaps. Um, you've got money, fit which is debt backed and we're going to have a debt crisis a bond crisis you know most debt exists in the form of bonds that goes up in flames and you have a phoenix that comes out of the ass uh, the the uh, ashes with maybe you could deem this a token you know this was set to happen in 2018 of course it's quite a hard prediction to get the exact time right i think it might have been kicked down the the, the road a little bit uh, maybe the events of march 2020 have, have, have sped it up 
and then maybe you've even got the Stella Lumens logo there. No, that is a joke. Um, you know, th this is interesting, and I think that they are very much onto something with this. So from the article, 30 years from now, America, Japan, sorry, Americans, Japanese, Europeans, and people in many other rich countries and some relatively poor ones will probably be paying for their shopping with the same currency. Prices will be quoted not in dollars, yen, or DMARCs, but in, let's say, the Phoenix. The Phoenix will be favoured by companies and shoppers because it will be more uh, convenient than today's national currencies, which by then will see a uh, quant case of much disruption to the economic life in the last 20th century. Very interesting predictions. Uh, from the article, preparing the way for the Phoenix will mean fewer pretended agreements on policies and more real ones. It will mean allowing and then actively promoting the private sector use of an international money alongside existing nation monies. Um, that would let people vote with their wallet. This was written in, this was written in 1988. They tell you what's coming. It's just a lot of people shrug it to the wayside. Isn't it amazing how many conspiracy theorists out there have been proven right over um, the last three years? Vote, uh, vote with their wallet for the eventual move to a full currency union. The Phoenix will probably start as a cocktail of national currencies, just as a special drawing right is today. In time, though, it will value against national currencies would cease to matter because people would choose it for the convenience and the stability of its purchasing power. Stability of its purchasing power. So what's going on with the other currencies, I wonder? Um, and actually, if you've read books like The Economic Hitman, which talks about the IMF, there's so this is why we need to make a documentary on this, um, because there's so much that I've got in this tiny little brain um, that we can share on this subject. I truly do believe that this is coming in our lifetime. It may sound crazy. Maybe I've got my tinfoil hat on. I just think that when you add up all the dots, um, the, 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 the picture is quite clear. Um, so it's very interesting. Very interesting that crypto was given to us during a time period where we're seeing the fiat systems wane. Um, and they speak about a number of things here. One thing that's very interesting as well, I think, is if you look at how we went off of a gold standard, it went like this. And this is the same reason why we might enter a global currency standard. So it started off with France. The United States basically that led to Nixon taking everyone off the gold standard, um, basically acted as the World Bank. So they'd take people's gold and in turn, they distribute US dollars, okay? So they distribute US dollars and everyone kind of trusted that system until France, I think it was France first, I can't remember the president at the time, basically said, we want to swap our dollars back for the gold. And actually, other countries look to do this. And at that point, the United States that had promised that they weren't going to issue more dollars than gold that they had, and actually did that, very quickly realized there was a problem. And basically, what would have happened if everyone had tried to redeem, and, they, and Nixon hadn't come out and taken everyone off the gold standard, was everyone's the, the dollar itself would have collapsed, and everyone's economies would have collapsed. So basically, it was a poison pill, the dollar almost, that everyone had, had taken. And if they hadn't all agreed, and this is what Nixon basically did, to come off the gold standard, everyone's economies would have collapsed. Just like today, every most major countries, and including a lot of the small ones that have taken IMF loans and, 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 and things such as this, have that dollar poison pill in them in the, in the form of debt. Okay? And how I think a, a global currency is... Um, established is essentially when they when, when the game is up the game is up and actually people will have to agree because there won't be another alternative other than complete economic disruption for that country to go onto a new standard because the 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 the, the, the bond crisis that i think we're going to see um, and this could all be like i say maybe the yield curve is perhaps predicting this i don't know Let's move on to some tweets and some other stuff because we've kind of outlined quite a bit uh, already. Again, we will look to do a documentary on this. 
A hundred year old Henry Kissinger went to China for what reason? This is recent, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Again, shared by Francis. Great, great guy to follow. Um, I can't stress that enough. It's not about US debt, not about the trade war, not even about Taiwan. In this thread, we find out what Kissinger and Xi discuss behind closed doors, something that will affect us all. So the biggest threat to the world is not China, but the $31.4 trillion US debt. US bond prices will crash inevitably and nuke many countries' economies. Hundreds of millions of jobs and trillions of dollars in pensions will disappear. Again, bond uh, pensions and institutions are stuffed. Pensions mainly because they're mandated to do so, as it's seen as the safe asset. Um, but what happens when bonds go down and pensions can't pay out the people that they owe the pensions to? You know, then this is kind of how, okay, well, then people are going to be looking and almost asking for a new system and a, and a, a debt jubilee of sorts, which actually debt jubilees were common practice in certain places years ago. Um, this this is all, uh, 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 and let me know in the comment section so far, guys, am I crazy? Or is this something, and I don't think I'm doing myself any favors for coming out and saying all this, that, that, that uh, we can genuinely see happening. Hundreds of millions of jobs and trillions of dollars in pensions will disappear. Why would Kissinger ask China to help? When Xi uh, started his first term, he was advised that the Chinese economy couldn't withstand a US bond crash. China deleveraging de campaign was launched in 2013. It sent the two largest real estate developers to bankruptcy in 2021. Remember, it was at Evergrande, I think we covered, we covered that whole story when it happened. Um, did Xi make a deadly mistake? During the first visit in 2018, everyone in China was in a state of euphoria. Business borrowing like crazy to expand. Housing prices were sky high. Jack Ma was further expanding his empire to by giving young Chinese free loans. It was a disaster waiting to happen. By popping its own financial and real estate bubble in a controlled manner, the Chinese government refused an economic time bomb. But Western experts say Xi is driving China into the brink of collapse, right? I went shopping for a new condo last week. My agent told me that, yes, local govs had to step in and fund uh, most unfinished building projects. And things weren't great for the last three years. But she was busy again. Home buyers are taking advantage of lower housing prices. There's a video over here of him uh, walking around a condo, a very nice looking condo, actually. Uh, here's a gorgeous 100 square meter condo with three bedrooms and two bathrooms. But I disagree. Back to Kissinger. Um, if a 100 year old man is going on a plane for 14 hours, he'll need a medical team along with him. Kissinger jeopardizes his health by traveling to China for what reason? It's got to be something about his own legacy. China has spent the past decade insulating itself from the inevitable US bond crash. It won't be um, as um, enthusiastic about saving the US in 2008. The US economy is near its end. The only exit is... And then he's calling for war here. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that. That's not my call. Kissinger traveled to Beijing to discuss the possibilities of, again, calling for um, war. Uh, Kissinger's trip to Beijing has one purpose only, to discuss how to minimize damage. Um, if a war breaks out between uh, these two factions, I hate being so doom and gloom, but here is a Chinese phrase. Whenever... Uh, danger lurks, opportunity awaits. Um, and I think that's a silver lining. Now, I'm not calling for um, and predicting any kind of a unrest like that, um, but I am certainly predicting that the bond market crashes. And I think it's interesting that Xi has been moving away from US debt. Actually, you'll find if you look at countries in regards to debt, Quite a few of the countries that didn't take the dollar poison pill, we happen to, the West happens to be at war with and, and, and very much demonized. Now, I'm not sure if I'm maybe outspoken with saying that. Um, that's just perhaps a view that I have. Let's read this and then let's get into some graphs and I will love and leave you. Again, do not be too doom and gloom about this whole situation. The greatest transfer of wealth is at hand. 
And if we can help people, um, and I'm not saying we can, but we'll, we'll, we'll certainly try. If we can help people to, um, first of all, survive that financially and benefit from it. Um, and it's never nice to talk about a subject where there's going to be a lot of suffering on the back end of it and to certainly talk about benefiting, but but do well, you know, in, in relation to it, then we certainly will uh, try our best um, to do that. So global debt crisis, global debt has escalated to a record high of 300 trillion, implying a 349% leverage on gross domestic products. Federal debts held by the public have risen by uh, by uh, risen just as aggressively, uh, with Congressional Budget Officer CBO predicting such debts to reach 118% of GDP by 2033. CNBC notes that uh, elevating the debt overhang amidst bloating inflation and slowed economic growth will be excruciatingly painful for economies. Meanwhile, a strong US dollar has added to the, intre the um, interest rates, making it even more expensive to raise money and repay debts. During this period, mandatory spending and rising costs will continue to outpace revenue and economic growth. As a result, several dozen economies will likely be pushed into default, while many more already have. Talks then about the 20, March 2020 situation, um, which is very interesting. Again, we'll release a documentary on all of this. Um, it's extremely interesting, isn't it? Uh, and actually, the thing is, if people start defaulting on their debts, just like why Bitcoin was created when they started bailing out the, 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 the banks in a kind of similar-ish uh, manner, people will have to step in and do one of two things. Either allow the defaults to happen, and thus a domino effect of defaults, which if money is backed by debt, what does that call into question for the actual money? And this is how money dies um, as we know it and a new system is issued in. They've probably already got one in place. Um, but isn't it, you know, isn't it interesting that they may have to step in and actually subsidize, just like we saw in the U UK, for example, with the gilts market, they had to step in and actually buy up gilts. And we're already talking, they're already talking about the, the, the Bank of England having to pay 150 billion to, uh, in, in five, seven years to or five years to recuperate that. Um, they'll have to step in. And if they step in, they'll issue more debt, thus watering down the entire system even more to potentially a bigger scale. And at what point does it get watered down that much that it, you know, we end up in this kind of hyperinflationary uh, environment? So there's this kind of two ways that this goes. Either they allow the defaults to happen or they actually just inflate everything infinitely um, on the back end of the defaults happening, which ultimately may lead to a distrust and if you think about money really um it's a story and the best storyteller wins and, and what happens when people stop believing in that story it's very interesting stuff this is interesting the u.s treasury admits that the debt situation is unsustainable even publishing it in a graph problem is their graph black line is optimistic the reality is that the problem likely soon goes parabolic red line it's just math so this is their uh, debt held by the public historical and current policy projections for debt held by the public. You can see where we currently are today at 100 and plus uh, percent um, to, to GDP. And you can see the exponential line going up. We haven't even factored in geographics, a uh, the, what's going on with the population in terms of, you know, a, a real, and Stan Druckermiller recently spoke about this boom in terms of old people. I'm not, meaning to be the bearer of bad news here but the situation does not look positive and and the funny thing is we're long in the market right now so i think there is a window of opportunity until this happens i don't predict it to be happening in the next year or so i think we need to wait for the yield curve to invert and a number of other things but that's short term uh, this i do believe is an inevitability eventually and i could be 100 percent wrong on that guys i'm just showing you why i think this and we'll be bringing out a documentary to um sum it all up in more detail uh, this is U.S. federal government current expenditures, interest payments quarterly. Um, and you can see the U.S. interest expenditures is now annualized at $928 billion, so basically a trillion dollars a year. That's bigger than the entire defense spending just on interest payments. And the Fed's set to do another hike today, by the way. 
Um, Justin, national debt skyrockets by 57 billion in just four days and 1 trillion from July 17th to July 20th. So this is when they actually upped the debt ceiling. This is the US Treasury Department. This is not a joke, guys. Uh, this is completely unsustainable and, and debt is related. Debt and money supply and balance sheets are all related actually to assets. And this is why we've essentially, if you look at why your grandparents bought a house, 50, 60 years ago for a couple of grand, and now they're hundreds of grands. This is the answers lie in, in, in what's gone on with the currency and, and the manipulation of it. So the US Gov to the world, we need more suckers to cover up debt. Bricks, eat your heart out. Uh, US Treasury issues a 4% worth of 2022's US G USA GDP in new debt in one month. Lol, uh, interest expenditures on that one trillion will likely be uh, 25 to 30 billion. It's not looking good, is it? Um, and maybe there is a, some way that they can sort of steer this ship around the iceberg that is the, the uh, uh, defaults. Uh, I just am not convinced. And at what point does it get silly? At what point do the implication here, and again, another reason we started the channel for people is you've got to realize that the system we live in is, is debt based. Your wages your time that is the most precious asset and, 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 and most valuable thing of them all, you give up for this money that they control, manipulate, and just, you know, do things like we're exploring in this video um, with. Um, and I think it's very interesting how we're seeing, they mentioned BRICS there. BRICS is Brazil, Russia, um, India, China, and I don't know what the S is for, actually. Um, I do apologize. Um, I'm sure one of you will let me know in the, in the comment section off the top of my head. Um, but they're all moving to away from the sort of the US dollar system. We even saw France move away from the US dollar system, which is kind of you know, French, French uh, uh, you know, Western world sort of moving away from it. Um, it's interesting. We're seeing a lot of um, South America also doing a similar thing. And it's very interesting. We actually covered on my daily market update. For those of you that don't subscribe to the channel, we cover the crypto market daily. I, I, I'm a, a crypto fanatic. We cover everything blockchain. Um, we also cover economics. We, we again, listen to far smarter people than myself. We have lots of podcasts with uh, uh, creators and, and, and everything in between. Um, but this was from BlackRock, and they were saying that actually they're looking to add Bitcoin. Um, and th th that's interesting itself, and certainly to the allocation that they did in this test. Um, but this sort of 60-40 equity bond portfolio, which has been the norm over the past 40 years, that may have just changed. And if you haven't got those buyers for the bond market, then that kind of, again, bonds go down, people can't cover their uh, the value that they have, and you find these holes in, in, in the balance sheet, um, and so on and so forth, and it, it, it kind of spirals. So global debt on the rise, emerging markets across a $100 trillion uh, market cap, uh, trade group says. There's so much stuff we can pull up on this, and, and we'll look to get a really good... Uh, documentary together um can i use the word warning people P perhaps um but really we, we we care about people and we want people to to do well and to see this as a, a genuine possibility i certainly do think it's a possibility and i think it's quite likely that we do have a, a debt failing and a currency um change i think there's going to be a new horse to replace the old one um, and it's likely going to involve blockchain on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Uh, let me know all your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Hit me up on Twitter and anywhere else um, that you guys can hit me up. And yeah, we're going to love and leave you. Have a wonderful Wednesday, guys. Catch you in the next one.